tower and we're up on this ride and drive with the new Grand Sports that's going to be their unveiling here. And that uh, they asked me, uh, Chevrolet and GM asked me to come up to bring the real, the first Grand Sport. Not, it's number five, but we made five the first, and this is the fifth one of the Grand Sports back in the day. And then the next year was 76. Worked uh, with Chevrolet Engineering and did the engine development with Jim Hall and Roger Penske, and uh, was in the development factor of the new aluminum motor that we would do it. Oh, it was okay. top secret. We were, we were in a race group, and my boss was named Vince Piggins, and his boss was Jim Perkins, which was the president of Chevrolet. It wasn't our idea, it was Zora Duntoff's idea. He's the one that orchestrated and got the, the money up for the project, and he, met, he only got to five, and then they crunched the project. That was a, they had a, a projection of 125 cars to be built, but they, they stopped at the, uh, they had that AMA band of Chevrolet wasn't in racing, so they just crunched the project. And then they handed, uh, the, the, uh, a lot of people don't know, the saving factor of the five cars was a fellow called John Meekum in uh, Texas. And John Meekum kind of bought the cars and took them to Nassau to start with. And that's the progression of the car came from Nassau and then went to, you know, Elkhart Lake and then, and then went to Sebring in 12 hours. And, and it did pretty fair under very little testing, yeah. If we could find any good about it is, they showed the precedence of racing. They were on the brink of making more of a, a street car, per se, than a performance car. You know, going to a lot more heavier car and more of the fine components inside the car. But they, they ended up with this, this lightweight, which was nothing, you know. So anyway, it, it just is neat that I could have an opportunity to own the car. And I bought it Christmas Eve of 78. Wow. I actually crewed on the car in 1974. No, excuse me, 1964 with Jim Hall and Penske at Sebring at 12 hours. And it also led, first American car ever led, Sebring ever, you know, American car led. The Ferraris were coming up, but they, for seven, I think it was seven laps, and everybody went crazy when they seen that, that Corvette coming down through there. This new piece is just, I, I, and I wouldn't say this, I'm involved in it, but I would not say this if it wasn't true. The bang for the buck is just there. I mean, a, a lady that could be a secretary to a engineer just get both goods out of it i mean it, it's just so practical that word practical i have to have, emphasize it it, it just is a, a, a real engineered car and some of it is to me over engineered it's, it's just i i can honestly say as i come up and seen the years of the evolution of it and all they have really done a good job on it you know i'm a race driver you know i've been racing for years and all. So when we take the car out, and it's an automatic, you know, I, I would never think an automatic would, you know, fascinate me, because I love shifting and all. So we took the car out here, and uh, when he nailed it, I, my foot's on the floor, and I took point to it, look at my floor, I, I mean, my, it's denting in, I'm a, and what I liked about it is the driver ability that was in there was kind of like the way I drive. He never kept going on the exact, uh, jumping on the car. And when you jump on the car, you change the the uh, the, the stance of, uh, of the car, and then all the shocks don't know what to do. The smoothness tells the shocks and the traction control how to get through the corner. And that's the real the the real thing here is, and people probably won't understand it. The off camera turns here is where you really see the ability of a car, man, it just stuck like it was no tomorrow. Yeah, and, and then that, that full 
three, uh, not 360, but uh, full where you could ride the car all the way around and drift it out. Never wavered a bit. And, and it, it shifts between that time with the automatic. It shifts and it never had a falter between the shifting points. I love that part of it. Yeah. The, the thing that in the years, I did, I'm six foot, a little better than six foot. And I hated scrunching up in the car. So I was adamant about them when they were building them to make the seat location back. And one of the plant managers was six four. He went in there one day and started spreading everything out and busting and carrying on to make that seat go back so he could sit in it. So then they started building them with the length, you know, taller people. But consequently now they're going to shorten it up a little bit and scrooching up a little bit. But other than that, it's just a fabulous piece. And these didn't drive good. They were all over. They wheel hopped. They, you couldn't get it to ground. The technology of the tires weren't up and they had them old narrow little old things. And here we had more horsepower than from 63 to 67. People don't know it. The size, the width of the tire in that time frame went four times wider than when they started with to 67, the width just exploded. Of course, then it went faster, then the car handled a lot better. Once in a while, I'll take it out. The thing I don't like to do with the, that's the first aluminum motor we ever built. Uh, see, I was in the engine development part, and that, that's a prototype motor, it's number two built. And that actually run in the chaparrales versus the lightweight here. So I don't have, I don't want to hurt it. And people don't understand, when you start these motors up, and shut them down cool, it just it plays havoc with them. Because when you start it again, the, the oil don't have the, the ability to lubricate. So when you start the engine back up again, it's like metal against metal. It, here goes the camshaft lobes and cylinder walls and stuff like that. So, yeah. I, but that, if I do run it, it'll be a length of time. I just, I just can't say because, uh, I, you know, none of them have sold recently. So, yeah. but it, it would be a, a pretty hefty, you know, it ain't in my ballpark. I shouldn't own it. <laughs> so I'm just I, a I, regular I, guy, you know. How you doing, buddy? Good, thank you.